Hello everyone. It's a beautiful crisp day. Crisp. Up in Maine. About 18 degrees today. That's about all it's going to get. Hope everyone's uh, enjoying life, you know. Because I am. I mean, uh, every day you, you know, you wake up. And uh, that's just... You should be thankful for that, you know, because uh, a lot of people just dropping like flies lately. But, uh, you know, try to be positive and uh, just live life while you can. And um, a day you wake up, you're not in pain is a plus. But today, not really one of those days for me. I'm making the most of it. But uh, some days I wake up and my back just doesn't want to cooperate. Puts me in pain, but, um, you know, you got to make the most of the day, do what you can, and uh, it's almost Christmas. It's, um, I believe, December 15th. Um, you ready for Christmas? Got all your presents and spend all your money. Um, maybe you got some cool stuff already. You never know, but... I'm going to um, give you a little bit of a walk around and uh, show you kind of what's, uh, what's going on for winter preparation and uh, also a current inventory of uh, what's going on with my vehicles and what I got. So thanks for joining along. Here we go. Well, I guess we'll uh, get the most sad news over with first, but most of you know my 87 Dodge Raider plow rig is uh, it's just kind of one I got for free for junk and kept it around a few years, plowed the yard with it, um, had it parked over on the side for the summer, ran and drove, parked it there. And uh, now it doesn't run. And uh, I've been working on it like crazy. Um, last season, I uh, was plowing the neighbors, trying to help out. And uh, we had some catastrophic failure in the front frame area, right where the uh, plow frame and everything mounts up. Um, the frame boat six inches or so behind where the upper control arm mounts is uh is ripping right out completely rotted and uh now the whole plow frame shifted down it's hanging off uh flops around when you go to plow with it but i finished out the season and uh was still running fine you know as you know the chassis is not in it's uh, pretty much non-existent, most of this thing, which is uh, crazy because the thing only has around 50,000 miles original. And uh, the frame's in pretty rough shape, but there's not much rot on the body. So I said, well, you know, maybe before the snow, which I always run out of time, but I was going to get it in the garage and see if I could Frankenstein some metal you know, some kind of support to uh, support that plow frame. But, um, didn't want to run. And, uh, seems like come to the conclusion that the mice or some sort of vermin have gotten in and chewed something that I can't find. I've chased wires. I've, I've put a lot of hours into it out here. And, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, how much aggravation is it worth to you to uh, keep something going for a convenience? It was really nice to be able to uh, just start it up and plow the driveway, especially the end where the plows on the road leave a high bank. Um, you know, I, I've been fighting with this thing ever since I got it. Every single winter, it's a battle. And I go out and I, I deal with it and I battle with it and get it going. But um, it gets to the point where 
you have to delete something in your life, you know, in order to get peace and, uh, you know, get some burden off your, off your back, I guess. And, uh, this is one of those things that I'm just, uh, I'm just done with it. So, I'm either going to keep the plow or, uh, another guy might want to buy it. So, um. It's a sad day, but I've been taking off all my stuff that I had on this, my, uh, you know, custom fuel tank and all my wiring and switches and stuff that was on it, and uh, it's going to turn in to be crushed, and this right here will be uh, my only source of no removal it's pretty much brand new Husqvarna electric start heated grips I've always had it um, but having the plow I only needed it so much just do a little bit of the edge and uh, I would make a path in the backyard for the dogs to walk around take a dump or whatever but uh, it's pretty nice, and uh, I'm going to change the oil in it and fire it up. And uh, luckily, we haven't gotten serious snow yet. Um, not anything to really worry about. Just little dustings here and there. So, uh, I'm supposed to get a few inches tonight, maybe, but maybe it'd be nothing. We'll get it prepared and. Uh, We'll just, uh, we'll have to be like everyone else that doesn't have the luxury of having a running plow vehicle that they can just fire up, put the heat on, and plow their driveway. So, it's just, uh, it's how it is. The, uh, free Ford Ranger is just, uh, sitting pretty in the garage. Check out that 4x4, four four. um... Just sitting in there, not much to say about that right now, but uh, definitely more to follow. 2005 Ford Ranger, 5-speed, 4-wheel drive, 80,000 miles. I recently traded two old boat motors that I got for scrap for this working uh, Miller type furnace that this guy had in his garage that he didn't need anymore and uh, I traded straight up he would have wanted 200 bucks for it but he wanted those boat motors so I traded him those and I just picked it up so I'm going to be uh, trying to make a space of course right now I got a free tank of propane I was just burning off just to warm your hands but uh, this whole area I'm gonna transform here pretty soon I'm gonna change it all around right now I got you know I got the old arrow wood stove but uh, I'm gonna be taking that and I'm gonna be moving it over in the corner kind of kitty cornered this bench is coming out of here all this stuff's moving because uh, the fridge that's got to move the furnace is gonna go like right under the stairs here and um, it's a hot air furnace runs off oil when you pull a vehicle in the garage here um, the length you know especially like uh, pretty much any of the vehicles I have um, but having like uh, the Suburban in here, the Chevy truck or something, you pull it up to close the door and you're right here and you know, you're, you're barely opening the fridge door, you're barely putting wood in the stove. So when I set it up, I really wasn't thinking about that of the total length, but, um, so I'm going to be moving all this and I'm going to leave this whole area right here open 
to the wall so that I have that extra space when I pull a vehicle in I can still walk around and open the hood and you know work on the under the hood or whatever I have to do um, so that's what I'm going to be doing there uh, the furnace pretty easy to um, hook up it just plugs right into 110 it's got a thermostat the guy gave me the whole setup so there's the stack for outside uh, this is the homemade little uh, cottage base he made for it um, everything's there like it, it was just it was hooked up I mean it was working in his garage he just we just unhooked it and I took everything and uh, he made this there's a piece of metal that attaches to uh, the heat comes out from the bottom on those so he made it so the heat will come up for a garage rather than just go on the floor and be heating the floor so that's what that whole base is about this is the whole um, tank setup very simple this is what uh, a lot of people use up here outside the garages and stuff just a 55 gallon drum uh, with a custom heavy duty it's heavy as hell this uh, whole stand that it sits on it's got the filter whole line to go through so I'll just have to uh, cut a hole and this is what ha the wind gets so strong here and it comes down the driveway and it rips the stuff off so it's a problem there but uh, so you know the line will go in and you know we'll have the we'll have to hog a hole uh, right in the side and we'll have to have the uh, stack coming right out for it but what's nice about this is uh, as you know, I get a lot of heating oil because I remove oil tanks. Um, and they always have some fuel in them. And actually right now I have a couple of uh, containers in the shed full of heating oil. So um, you can just pour that in there. And of course you can get diesel or whatever you want if you have to. And uh, put the thermostat and we'll just still going to keep the wood stove like I said but um, you'll be able to just walk in turn the thermostat on warm it up start a fire in the stove you know um, so it'll be a lot better I got this uh, electric heater uh, a couple of, was it last Christmas or maybe the one before I don't really remember Got it as a gift from a relative, but, um, you know, it works pretty good, but really not enough for this garage. I knew it wouldn't be. It just kind of takes the chill out, and, it, uh, you know, it's 250 volt, so it does use some juice, which is not good on the old electric bill. But for a little extra heating, it does come in handy sometimes, and, of course, we're... Uh, we're fighting, you know, no insulation. I mean, the garage is not insulated. And down the road, I am going to... My goal is to eventually get it insulated and, you know, do all that goes along with that. The other thing I'm fighting is uh, this hole here that goes up to the upstairs. Full walk around up there, you know, for storage and stuff and eBay my little eBay store is up there, but um, I need to close this off the winter somehow. I wanted to build, a, you know, a little house around it that when you go up, there's just a door, you know, you just open the door and go in. That way it's all closed off, but right now the heat just goes right up there. And uh, I did block it off last winter. I put like an old door up there that I had and... You know, I was going to make, probably for this time, just like a piece of plywood, a couple hinges, and make a little trap door. So we get a couple of vehicles sitting in the backyard for the winter. Don't need to be driving them around uh, in the salt. Of course, you already know the 78 Suburban. 
drove through many winters, but now just takes it easy. I didn't even put a lot of miles on it this summer. Too busy hauling around stuff with other things, but um, you're able to take the liability insurance off and still keep them registered. So the insurance goes down quite a bit on stuff that you don't use in the winter up here. So that works out. Um, haven't really talked about this vehicle too much. I, time gets away from you and you get busy, but um, I wanted to make a whole video on it uh, a while ago um, since we got it. But um, just a little quick preview. 92 Buick Roadmaster. Um, nice little story that goes along with uh, how how we got that. And uh, I will make another video on it. Explain thoroughly. The old Christmas tree still on there. So, nice little area. Kind of trim back some of the branches here. Um, that one tree I told the neighbor that's going to come down, go right down to his house. But uh, I angled these accordingly. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Um, got some wood to clean up there, cut up. But um, yeah, I'll just sit back here for the winter. So I also have this space. You got to use all the space you have, you know, when you own uh, some property. But uh, yep, I got all this space. This is where the uh, Raiders sat all summer. Just sat right over here, out of the way. And uh, so I decided to take the old farm truck and park it over here it's still insured it's still registered in case uh, it needs to jump into action but um, it doesn't need to work too much in the winter either of course being two-wheel drive um, you know it's not too good anyway but um, that's where she's sitting for the winter, for the snow. In past winters, uh, I had the RV, which you don't see here, and you won't see it in this video. But I usually park that in the backyard. Um, but there's a lot of things that become a pain in the ass putting that back here, tree branches, and uh, just getting it. I actually have to drive it in between the house in the garage and it barely fits I usually end up catching something so it becomes a big project and then also um, when it comes time to get it out and use it I usually can't get it out of here um, too easily because of uh, the mud and everything thawing out in springtime so that's uh, a friend of mine, actually, a guy I became friends with, uh, it's got a shop and some land only about five minutes from here. He let me park it there. I'll show you where it's parked in another video. Um, but no charge or anything. He just let me park it over there, and that way it's nice and safe, not under any trees. And... Uh, I have this little front piece of land here where I can park stuff uh, right to the road. And I usually, in uh, other years, I've had my trailers, like you've seen, parked out here. Um, 
but again my little utility trailer there that's got the sides that I load with scrap you won't see that because that is at another guy's house and I almost was going to get rid of it but I ended up parking that out of the way because I bent the axle in it so it needs uh, either an axle or a brace or something on that that I gotta that I gotta do so I decided to clear this whole front um, and I was gonna be a place to push snow if the plow worked but now it's just uh, was able to decorate a little bit for Christmas um, my wife likes that sort of stuff and I do too so uh, got a little bench out here and got it set up a little bit so kind of nice not have vehicles and trailers parked out here just kind of keep it clean for now the old uh, farm trucks right there could pull it right out if I needed to so So as far as the driveway goes, we finally got to the point where we got two four-wheel drive vehicles, all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Um, you've seen this peeking out in a few videos. I haven't, again, just like the wagon, I was going to make a big video on it, but it's a 2002 Cadillac Escalade 6-liter all-wheel drive and that's what replaced the blue truck and I have a massive story on how that became but um, I am gonna make a video explaining more on that and of course you know big black so now having both of these you know the other trucks can sort of uh, take the winter off from you know having to drive around and get stuck and um, the dually stays on the road um, unfortunately it will have to see some salt and some uh, crap because it's got the dump bed in it now and uh, I need that I do a lot with that I haul a lot of stuff around for people do trash removal um, so I won't use it you know too much when I don't have to but uh, got some number one in there cleaned up some stuff around but, uh, it'll go out when it needs to of course when it uh, when it's heavy snow they really don't want to move anyway being two-wheel drive the big block not too good in the snow but It'll get the job done. So that's the full inventory of vehicles. It's pretty much what we're looking at in the driveway. Radar will be gone. Be even more space. So there you go, there's a little uh, update video for you on uh, current inventory and uh, just what's going on, you know, for winter prep and uh, appreciate you watching, you know, <clears throat> hope you enjoyed it, hope it's uh, of some interest to you and uh that's it. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the week. Enjoy the month. Enjoy life. And that's all I got to say about that. So we'll see you on the next one. You never know. Might even see you on the streets. <laughs>